everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here to record my middle grade March TBR, which is super exciting. It does not feel like it's time for this to happen again. So I wanted to make a video and let you know what it was that I was planning to read for all of five prompts that have come out. And I also wanted to give two recommendations for each prompt. So this can be both kind of like a recommendations video and a TBR video. Middle grade March is put together by Krista from Books and Jams, Katie from Life Between Words, and also Amanda from The Curly Reader. So I'll leave all of their information down below in case you want to learn more. The first prompt is a book with five or more words in the title and for this one I am planning to read How to Find What You Are Not Looking For which has a lot of words in the title. This is by Vera Hirnandani who wrote The Night Diary which I really enjoyed when I read a couple years ago and this book is set in the late 1960s as a lot of social change is happening in America. Particularly it looks at the main character's sister um, getting married to someone outside of her race after the Loving versus Virginia case. Also it's supposed to look into learning disabilities which the main character I believe has also anti-semitism that the family is facing. It looks into social themes like I enjoy and it's also going to be in a historical setting which is interesting. I feel like the cover is a little bit more colorful than The Night Diary and it's a little bit less morose looking so I'm hoping that there is some lightheartedness to this as well. And for my recommendations for books with five or more words in the title, one of them is The List of Things That Will Not Change by Rebecca Stead. This one looks into a main character who is facing this divorce from her parents but I think it's a book that's different from a lot of other books where divorce is featured and like two separate families are featured because they are so accepting of each other and I think it's really really lovely. I also love how this book looks into the characters problems with eczema which is not something that I've ever seen in a book before um, and she also goes to therapy and I thought that the therapist sections were really good as well. So this is a book for people who love contemporary and who love books about family and about coming of age. And then the other one that I picked for more than five words in the title is The Miscalculations of Lightning Girl, which has five words in the title. This is one of my favorite middle grade books that I, I read. It's one of the ones that started my whole journey with middle grade. This is a book by Stacey McAnulty, who has written so many books for kids. This book features a main character who was hit by lightning and it has made her become very good at math. She goes to a new school where she makes new friends and she starts volunteering at this rescue, taking care of dogs and things. And it's just a really lovely story of kind of feeling like an outcast and then finding a group of people who accept you for who you are. And I listened to it on audiobook and it was just fantastic on audiobook. It's a book that really is just tender hearted and will pull at your heartstrings and made me tear up at the end. The second prompt is to read a book featuring an orphan main character which I found kind of interesting and the book that I'm reading for this prompt is The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett. I've never read this book. This is something that I really want to do this year is to read a few more classics or books that are just a little bit older and not just brand new middle grade books. So that's something that I'm working on this year and The Secret Garden is going to be one of those. I honestly don't know very much about it but it says she learns of a secret garden in the grounds that no one is allowed to enter and then she finds an old key and a gust of magic leads her to a hidden door that reveals a world that she could have never imagined so I hope that I enjoy it and I'm also um, hoping that it's going to give me kind of the vibes that I got when I first read Anna Green Gables for example. My two recommendations for this prompt Anna Green Gables which I feel like is one that you've probably heard of or have already read but it's a book that still stays with me has stuck with me. I read it a long time ago I read it like four or five years ago at this point. It's a book that made me feel so happy and content while I was reading it and it just has all of those feels that I think are really cozy and are one of the things that I love about middle grade. And then the second book that I want to recommend that has an orphan main character is A Home for Goddesses and Dogs and this is another dog book. It's a book about a girl who loses her mother and moves in with her aunts and it follows her acclimating to this new small town. Very woodsy and everybody kind of knows everybody's business. One thing that I found really interesting about this book is how much the small town people brought her into the foray. I don't know they were just so so sweet and I think that they were like no questions asked like everybody was really kind overall it's also a book where the main character is kind of hiding something from herself and like trying to compartmentalize the pain that she is going through from losing her mother until it kind of comes to a head there's really lovely found family in this from the aunts and then there's also like an older man that lives there as well and you kind of get to understand the connections be 
between everyone in the town. The third prompt is a contemporary book. Now this is where I shine. This prompt is for me and I actually have three books because I could not pick and they are ones that I've had for a bit now. I hope that I will get to all of them in March finally. I'm really trying to wrap up all of those books that I picked out from the library, middle grade books that I picked out from the library in January. So I'm hoping that by March all of those will have either been attempted or like return to the library if I don't like them, but I want to read all of them. So three of those include Violets Are Blue. This one's by Barbara D, who wrote one of my favorite middle grade books that I read a few years ago called Maybe He Just Likes You. This one is going to look into special effects makeup that this girl is working on in a school play. And I believe there's just like other stuff that's happening with friendships and families as well. A relatable novel about secrets, family, and the power of forgiveness. So I'm hoping to get to that one. I also have The Shape of Thunder. When I originally picked it up, I thought that it was kind of like other words for home which is the other book that i read by this author in kind of prose and it's not it's just regular novels so this is supposed to look into a grief it's a storyline that i always get pulled by in middle grade it's supposed to be a moving story about friendship and loss and how believing in impossible things can help us heal i do believe there's like a little bit of fantasy or magical realism in this so i'll keep you up to date on that and then the last one is called a soft place to land by jenny marks who wrote from the desk of zoe washington and in this book there are two characters who frequent this like little hideout that's at their apartment complex and then they start exchanging messages with each other on the walls and then it says until abruptly the kid stops writing back so she's trying to figure out what's happening there and because he might be in some trouble and my two recommendations for contemporary which was hard for me to whittle down one of them is called the ban this book by alan gratz if you've read any alan gratz he mostly writes books about history and kind of like survival-esque stories for middle graders but this book is a contemporary and it focuses on a group of kids who are in school and then there are attempts to ban a bunch of books from the school library and it's these kids trying to stop that from happening i think this is like really good for the time that we are in now it's also just a really good contemporary and i love how the kids are portrayed and and then the other one is one of my favorite middle grade books of all time and it's also a book about books or about libraries and that's called A Kind of Paradise. This is a book that focuses on a punishment that the main character is dealing with so she has to volunteer at this library during her summer. Like meant to be this punishment that really becomes like this really fulfilling role for her as she gets to know everybody in her town. This book really seared my heart because it came out during a time when the COVID pandemic started and like all libraries were closed and it really made me value so much kind of like the community aspect that the libraries bring and the look into how young girls see themselves like the mistakes that they've made and how it's hard for them sometimes to forgive themselves and ultimately understanding that it's okay the next prompt is number four a book set in asia or featuring an asian main character so for this one i'm going to read a place to belong by cynthia kadohata this is the author that wrote kira kira and also one book that i've read by her is called saucy which was a lot more light-hearted than I anticipated and I think that was like the wrong first book to read by this author. Saucy was about like raising pigs and like animal cruelty and like a family, a big family of different abilities. So it was interesting but I think that it didn't um, live up to my expectations of dealing with like tougher social issues and social themes that I sometimes like in my plots for middle grade books. So I'm going to try A Place to Belong next and this book it's actually really interesting. It's a historical fiction. The main character actually ends up moving back to Japan after Hiroshima and all the bombs that were dropped there um, during World War II. Kind of seeing the destruction that happened and what happens to this town after that. That's all I really know about it and that's all I really want to know. So it not only has an Asian main character but also the story takes place in Japan which is really cool. And for my recommendations, my first one is Stand Up Yumi Chung, which is a really lovely light-hearted book featuring an Asian main character who has these parents who want her to be a certain type of thing and she wants to be a stand-up comedian. Kind of everything snowballed in a ridiculous manner. I mean lies upon lies that then get found out but ultimately the main character has a heart of gold and really cares about her family. Just wants to be able to fulfill her own dreams. I also really enjoyed When You Trap a Tiger by Tay Keller. This prompt is perfect for this book, so I definitely recommend if you haven't read this book to try it out. It's a book that mixes that contemporary aspect that I love in books, but it was something that I'm not as well versed in or 
as well read in um, and that's like mythical aspects and magical realism in books I think in a way that is still really approachable for contemporary readers there is a great family dynamic in here especially with a, a lovely grandmother and also new friendships and new dynamics that are happening from moving to a new town and then the last prompt is a book that is older than you are and for this one I don't have the book on me but I do have the audiobook ready and that's Charlotte's Web I've never read Charlotte's Web and on par with wanting to read um, older books like The Secret Garden I'm trying to read older books that I feel like everybody's read that I haven't read and Charlotte's Web is one of them I know what happens in Charlotte's Web uh, I have been spoiled for that one it's okay I think I still want to read the story that will be the one that I'm going to read for this prompt and then the two that I want to recommend to you one of them is are you there God it's me Margaret this came out in 1970 this book focuses on religion uh, the main character has two different religions and she's trying to figure out where she fits in what I just love about this book is that it's written by Judy Bloom and she just has such a, a way with how she writes her books that feel approachable easy to read funny light-hearted but that also have those moments where you are asking tough questions and you are looking into yourself and like really pondering who it is that you are so I think she balances those two things very well between being like super serious and looking at difficult issues and then also just being lighthearted and fun like a young girl is and then I also want to recommend Beezus and Ramona and Beezus and Ramona came out in 1955 and I only read it for the first time like a year and a half ago this is the first book in the Ramona series I mean if you've been living under a rock it basically follows two young girls who are sisters and they are very different from each other. Ramona is really rambunctious and in your face. Beezus is a lot more follows the rules and walks a tight line and does what she is told. All the little things that they get up to. Again, very similar to Judy Bloom, and I feel authors of that time period where they balance like serious issues with really lighthearted things. They are in the minds of kids and when you read books like that you call back to when you were that age and the things that you were definitely doing like Beezus and Ramona are which I think is really really beautiful and magical getting on a like time machine and going back to who you were as a seven-year-old that is it for my middle grade March TBR and my recommendations if you've read any of these books that I've talked about please let me know down below and or if you're participating also let me know down below I'm super excited to get going and we will see what end up being standouts this middle grade March thank you so much for watching my video and I'll see you in my next one bye bye